to St Andrew's Cathedral. My name is Chris Allen. I'm one of the ministers here at the Cathedral. It's uh, wonderful to have you join us here for this very special occasion for Gary and Francis as they make very public uh, declarations of love and commitment to one another. Uh, friends, you will see here in the cathedral, we use a very traditional service uh, that, has, that Christians have been saying for well over a thousand years. Uh, you will notice that the flow of the service at the start, uh, we begin with what is called the preface, which is where we talk about what marriage is, a Christian view of marriage. And then we move to ask two questions, uh, both legal questions, uh, if anyone can show reason why they may not lawfully be joined in marriage, they speak uh, now or forever remain in silence. And then we move to ask Gary and Francis, uh, do they consent to be here, to be married themselves uh, to each other? And then we move to promises to be made and declared. First, vows, and then secondly, uh, promises that are attached to the rings as a symbol of their marriage before we declare both Gary and Francis to be husband and wife, and you give them a round of applause. And then we have the responses to the uh, marriage, which are hearing from scripture, and then prayers for Gary and Francis. With that being said, would you please ensure that your phones are turned off? And as the bridal procession comes into the cathedral, two instructions, please remain seated, and I will ask you to stand for the bride and her father. So seated for the bridesmaids and then standing for the bride. And if you would please not lean into the aisle or stick your hand uh, with a phone attached to it down the center aisle so that we get a nice clear shot.
we've come together in the sight of God for the joining in marriage of this man, Gary, and this woman, Frances. Our Lord Jesus Christ said of marriage that from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. So they are no longer two, but one. What therefore God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Marriage is the symbol of God's unending love for his people and of the union between Christ and his church. So St. Paul teaches that the husband must love his wife as Christ loved the church and that the wife must give due honour to her husband. Marriage should be honoured by all and is not to be entered into lightly or carelessly, but with reverent and serious respect for those purposes for which it was instituted by God. Marriage is a gift from God for the well-being of humanity and for the proper expression of natural instincts and affections with which he has endowed us. It is a lifelong union in which a man and a woman are called so to give themselves in body, mind and spirit, and so to respond that from their union will grow a deepening knowledge and love of each other. In the joys and sorrows of life, in prosperity and adversity, they share their companionship, faithfulness, and strength. In marriage, a new family is established in accordance with God's purpose so that children may be born and nurtured in secure and loving care for their well-being and instruction and for the good order of society to the glory of God. Gary and Francis have now come here to be joined in this holy union to which God has led them they seek his blessing on their life together, that they may fulfill his purpose for them, and they ask us to support them in this prayer. If any person here can show why they may not lawfully be joined in marriage, they speak now or hereafter remain in silence. I charge you both, as you will answer before God, that if either of you know any reason why you may not lawfully be joined together in matrimony, you now confess it, for be assured that those who marry otherwise than God's word allows are not joined together by God, neither is their matrimony lawful in his sight. Gary, will you take Francis to be your wife, to live together according to God's law? Will you give her the honour due to her as your wife, and forsaking all others, love and protect her as long as you both shall live? I will. Francis, will you take Gary to be your husband, to live together according to God's law? Will you give him the honour due to him as your husband and, forsaking all others, love and protect him as long as you both shall live? I will. Who brings this woman to be married to this man? God our Father, in your great love for humanity, you have given us the gift of marriage. So bless Gary and Francis as they pledge their lives to each other, that their love may evermore grow to be the true reflection of your love for us all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I, Gary, in the presence of God, take you, Francis, to be my wife, to have and to hold, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, as long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow and promise. I, Francis, in the presence of God, take you, Gary, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer, for poorer, 
in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, as long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow and promise Grant, Lord, that these rings may be a token and constant sign of the pledge of love and faithfulness which Gary and Francis make to each other through Christ our Lord. Amen. Francis, with this ring, I wed you with all that I am and all that I have. I honour you. In the name of God, amen. Gary, I receive this ring in token of our marriage. May God enable us to grow and love together. Gary, with this ring, I wed you with all that I am and all that I have. I honor you in, in the name of God. Amen. Francis, I receive this ring in token of our marriage. May God enable us to grow in love together. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Before God and in the presence of us all, by solemn consent and promise, by the giving and receiving of rings and by the joining of hands, Francis and Gary have now accepted each other in marriage. In the name of God, I declare them to be husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. God the Father, enrich you, Gary and Francis, with his grace. God the Son, make you holy in his love. God the Holy Spirit, strengthen you with his joy. The Lord bless you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Psalm, chapter 37, verse 3 through 7. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Uh, well, congratulations, Francis and Gary. Uh, what a great day. Uh, weather has held up for you, how perfect for you. Um, I know that today is uh, really the culmination of lots of planning. Uh, and meetings and organizing and putting things together and it's great that uh, things have gone so well for you and uh, we're just for the cathedral uh, we love weddings uh, we love hosting weddings and being a part of it and uh, this is just absolutely thrilling for us as I'm sure it has been for you and for your family um, of course weddings are fantastic for families uh, because they're a great way uh, to celebrate uh, children and family 
It's a great day for you to showcase your children. Uh, and don't Gary and Francis look uh, wonderful? It's a great day for uh, friends to be here in the best of times, as indeed uh, we do hope and pray, as do Gary and Francis. I know that you will be there for them in the tough times, which no doubt will lie ahead because you live in this world which is uh, fallen and not perfect. But you know, Gary and Francis, we are praying for great things for you. Great things. Today and tomorrow and the years. And Lord willing, the generations to come will look back on today and this event. You never know, you might have grandchildren and great-grandchildren, generations that you can't even count, who will look back on this day as being the reason that they are here. Of course, um, Christianity has always celebrated marriage and Christian marriage has always been, uh, dare I say, the high point, the high point of uh, celebration. Because so much of scripture, so much of uh, Christian um, Christianity is surrounded around the celebration of marriage and honoring marriage. In fact, uh, you could make a pretty good argument that from the very start of uh, the Bible, God's word, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, uh, the image that is always played out is marriage. It's a husband and a wife loving each other, committed to each other, serving each other, wanting and desiring the best for one another in the best times, but also in the tough times. Gary and Francis, we've been praying for you uh, here in the cathedral in our services publicly. Uh, we've been uh, quite literally uh, praying that uh, the Lord would bless you and keep you, that he would uphold in you uh, the promises that you were making today. And we've been praying in anticipation of that. Uh, it begs the question, uh, how in this uh, world in 2023, which tends to want to downplay marriage and uh, the exclusivity of the family, how do you go about having a great marriage? Uh, well, Scripture gives to us two examples of how to have a great marriage. The first is, uh, I guess, you might say the most obvious one. It's to have a marriage, a relationship, a commitment to one another that is based on real and genuine love. Uh, of course, you might be thinking, well, everything about today screams love. You know, how is the minister talking about love? If the one thing they've got, it's obviously uh, love, why is he talking about that? Well, because Gary and Francis, is anybody here who's been married for longer than five minutes knows uh, that your commitment to each other will hardly be tested today. Uh, your commitment to one another will be tested in the days and the weeks and the months and the years to come. When times are tough, when disappointments avail us. But you've made promises today, Gary and Francis, uh, to be not just somebody today, but to be somebody then. Uh, in fact, all of the promises, the vows, even the consent, you'll have noticed, was I will, as opposed to Hollywood saying I do, um, has to be, is to promise to be a certain person, Gary and Francis, tomorrow. And the person you have promised to be is someone who is committed to the other. Gary, you've made promises today to be and to want the very best for Francis. And Francis, you've made those same promises. The commitment that you've made today is to want the best always for Gary. Well, how do you do that? And uh, that is where Christianity uh, speaks out into that, I guess, that void or those difficulties that we know uh, will present. And that is to say, we look to the one who showed us love perfectly. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ, who loved the church. And it's, uh, uh, it's no by chance that the image of Jesus and his love for people is described in the image and the metaphor of a marriage where Jesus is the groom and the church is the bride. And that is where we see love displayed perfectly in Jesus' death for a world that was sinful. Gary and Francis, congratulations. Uh, we do hope and pray today is but the start of a wonderful marriage, a great marriage, where the Lord blesses you and we pray that the Lord makes his face to shine upon you. Let us pray now. And if you know these words that are printed, you might join with me in this prayer. 
We pray as Jesus taught us to say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Almighty Father, giver of life and love, look in favour on all who are made one in marriage, and especially on Gary and Francis as they enter into their new life together. In your love, deepen their love, strengthen their wills to keep the promises that they've made, that they may live to your glory and to the good of all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty Father, you have created us in your own image, and by your gracious gift, humanity is increased. To Gary and Francis, grant the blessing of children and such wisdom and loving care in the nurture of their family, that they and their children may grow to know you in their lives and give you praise and honour. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.